Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to this quick follow-up to my liquid glass tutorial. And here I just want to quickly show you how to create the mat that is the basis of the effect. And I've put a link to that tutorial in the description because this won't make much sense unless you've already seen that. So let's get going. OK, so here we are in Resolve. Let's make a new fusion composition. Let's call it Liquid Glass Matte. We'll have a duration of, I think, two seconds. And I'm going to go with a frame rate of 24. So let's open that up. And the first thing we want to do is make a background. So this is going to be black. And then we want to make another background. And we want to make this background white. So those two have merged together, the white over the black. What we're going to do is we're going to take this merge and we're going to add a rectangle mask like that. We're going to set the width to something like 0.7 and the height to something like 0.3 and the corner radius to 1. So it gives us this rounded cornered rectangle. First thing I want to do is I want to come to frame 30 and with the rectangle selected, I want to keyframe its level. And then I want to come to frame 0 and set that level down down to zero. And I want to come to around 15 frames. And what we want to do is we want to add, I think, three little globules inside the area of this rectangle. So still with the rectangle selected, let's select the ellipse tool and let's just shrink this down and let's maybe move this one to over here. We can copy it and then paste it, which adds another one to this chain here. And then we can move this one over and maybe just sort of shrink it down a bit. By the way, they don't necessarily need to even to be circles, but uh, let's keep them as circles. And let's add one more. Copy and paste. Move this guy over to maybe here. Increase the size. So the only important thing is to kind of keep them within the bounds of the rectangle itself. So then we're going to select our merge and we are going to add a blur. And after that, we are going to add a brightness contrast. So initially, let me set the blur to something like 60, but we'll probably need to adjust that. Let's have a look at our brightness contrast. So we want to set our low value to 0.5. And then we want to adjust our high value till our blobs are pretty much hardened up like that. Don't necessarily want to go all the way. Let's maybe go for 0.51. And now if we run it, our effect is looking like this. And we could almost leave it at that, but let's finesse it a little bit more. Let's just come back to the beginning and just decide if we're happy with that. If we don't want these blobs to be there right at the beginning, we can adjust the blur size until they're pretty much disappeared. So let's go with, uh, say, 72. And once I'm happy with that value, I'm going to come to frame 20 and I'm going to keyframe that value that we've chosen for the blur size. And then I'm going to come to frame 30 and I'm going to set it back down to something like four. And then if we run it, we're going to get this. So a couple of things we need to sort out, one of which is to come to the rectangle and choose the spline editor, select the last point and hit shift S to smooth that maybe just help this curve a little bit as well. So it goes quite fast and then slows down. So how's that going to look? That's a bit smoother. I think that's good. One other thing we could do before we finish is we could again come to around frame 15. Well, actually, no, let's come to frame 10 where the blobs are still apart. And we could select the polygon tool. And let's just draw a sort of wacky shape that connects the three globules. So having done that, let's increase the border width. We don't need to very much, but as you can see, if we do so, those start to join together a little bit more like that. It's a little bit more interesting. So if I bypass that polygon tool, you can see how that joining up is working really rather nicely. So just a couple of final notes. The output of this brightness contrast, as you might be able to see from the numbers, is obviously way out of range. So the simple way to fix that is to clip the black and to clip the white. And now those numbers are all under control. And if you're using this as the basis for my liquid glass tutorial, we will need an alpha channel. So all we need to do is at the end, add a luma key, And you can see we've now got alpha and we can proceed from that point. And you could maybe just group all of this. So select all of the nodes, command G to group them. F2 and call it mat. And you could work from here, uh, replacing the asset that I gave you. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.